This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll show you how to create this vector icon of a rolled up sheet of paper using Inkscape. So with that being said, let's close out of this and get started. And at any point in this tutorial, you, you can look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So the first thing we'll do in Inkscape is go to View, Select, View, Select Custom, and then Zoom. We're going to zoom in, zoom in at one to one. We'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button right here. And then we'll open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button. And from this menu over here, from this drop-down, make sure you have Less Selected chosen. And up here in the toolbar where it says Effect, make sure you have this first box unchecked. When scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We're going to want to have that unchecked throughout the duration of this tutorial. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come to our Circles and Ellipses tool. Let's click on that. And we'll go ahead and create a little ellipse, maybe about that size, that dimension. Uh, we can go over to our arrow now. We could take the opacity on this, bring this down in half. Um, if you see here on my screen, I have this set at 213 wide by 297 high if you want to use the same proportions yourself. Otherwise, something vaguely similar to this should work. So once you do that, we'll right click this and go to duplicate and then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the left. And then um, grab this arrow on the right here, hold control, and then click and drag this down. So it's about that much smaller. Maybe, uh, I'm going to bring this over to the right a little bit. Maybe about that size. You want to have these two ellipses with this one being this size, this one being that size, and about that far spaced apart. And once you get there, let's just go ahead and click and drag over both of them. And then go to right click, uh, right click, duplicate. And then hold control and click and drag these duplicated copies out of the way, down to the bottom. We're going to come back and use them in a little while. So now that we're here, we got these two ellipses. Let's go to our Bezier pen and let's turn on this little green squiggly line that says snap to paths. And we're going to take the cursor and snap it onto the top of this ellipse right here and click and then hold control and bring the line straight down until it snaps. And once it snaps, handle the path, go ahead and click. Then we can let go of control and bring this line to the bottom of this ellipse right here maybe about right there. Click, hold control, bring it straight up until it snaps and click again. Then we can let go of control and bring the line back to the starting point just like that. And then we'll go to our arrow tool. We'll make that red. We'll turn the stroke off by holding shift and clicking on the X button. If you don't hold shift, it'll turn the color off of the object. We don't want to do that. We want to turn it off. We, we want to turn off just the stroke, just this black outline right here. So to do that, we hold shift and press the X. Or you could just come to the stroke paint menu and turn it off that way. But um, we'll do this next. We'll take the opacity and drop that in half. And then we'll take this first black oval right here. We'll right click this and go to duplicate. And let's just make that green so we could differentiate it. And then let's click and drag over the whole thing and then deselect just this green oval. So hold shift and then go ahead and click on that green oval to deselect it. And we'll go to path union. And then we'll turn the fill off from the fill tab. We'll click the X button and turn that off. We'll come over to the stroke paint tab and turn that on with the blue button. And we'll come over to stroke style and we'll try out, let's try it about a 20 point stroke and see how that looks. All right, 20 points is pretty good. I'm going to give this a rounded join and a rounded cap. And then I'm going to take this one. I'm going to turn the stroke on there as well. Go to the stroke paint tab, turn that on. Stroke style, same size as previously, 20 point stroke. And then we'll go to fill. We'll turn the fill tab off. And then we'll right click this and go to duplicate and hold control on the keyboard and grab this arrow to the right right here and just scale it down about that much, just like that. Now what we could do next is, we, let's take our uh, Create Rectangles and Squares tool, and let's click and drag, let's create a rectangle going over the bottom half of this circle right here. You see I have the line going about halfway over that circle. Once you get that far, let's go back to the arrow, hold Shift on the keyboard, click on the oval, and go to Path, Difference. And then we could turn off our snap to pads. We don't need that anymore. So the next thing we'll do is we will take this first oval and we'll turn that into a path. We'll change that from a stroke to a path. So we'll go to path, 
stroke to path, and we'll do the same thing with this shape right here. Path, stroke to path. And the next thing we'll do is let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything and let's grab our Bezier pen and let's put the cursor right up here towards the top of that first oval about halfway through the line and then click and drag the line straight through this top line right here. You want to have it going about evenly through and exceeding the entire shape, maybe about out to here. Go ahead and click and then hit enter. And then we'll come over to the stroke style. Uh, let's make that 20, same as the other ones, 20, hit enter. And let's bring the opacity on that down in half. And let's go back to our arrow and go to path, stroke to path. And then we'll take this line and we'll put this on top of this little uh, half circle right here. And I'm going to zoom in over that just so I could get a closer look at it. I'm going to do that by holding control on the keyboard and rolling up on the mouse wheel. Or you could press plus and minus on the keyboard or you can use the magnifying glass tool. I'm using control on the mouse wheel. So I'm going to make take this line, I'm going to make this red just so I can differentiate it from everything else. I'm going to make sure that the corners of this line are matching up with the thickness of that oval right there. Um, yeah, see that's overlapping a little bit. I don't want that exactly. So that's good, just like that. See how it looks in the bottom here? I'll maybe zoom out a little bit. Um, no, maybe put that. Maybe about that. You want it to be a smooth transition. It doesn't have to be precisely to the pixel, but just to give you an idea, that's about where you want that line. And then we can click on this line, and we can go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And let's click and drag over these two nodes, and let's just bring this up a little bit so that it looks more flush with this line up top here. Previously, it looks like um, it wasn't quite, the perspective isn't quite lining up right because this is going to be, this, this roll of, sh this sheet of paper is going to have a little bit of perspective. So I'm going to take this line and bring it up to about here. Right about, right about there, that should do the trick. And then we can go back to the arrow. And then let's hold shift and click on this big shape in the background so we have them both selected. Let's right click that and go to duplicate and go to path intersection and we should be left with that little piece and we're going to turn that green just so we can see it and then I'm going to right click that piece and go to duplicate hold shift and click on that red line and go to path difference and then path break apart and then we can click off of it to deselect everything and then click on just this piece right here and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it Then we can click on this green piece again let's right click that and go to duplicate Hold shift on the keyboard and click on the big piece in the background and go to path difference. And then we're going to take this first oval right here. We're going to click on that. We're going to right click that and go to duplicate and hold control on, on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the left. Maybe about over here. Oops. I got to redo that. Click and drag it over here. And once you get it to about there, Let's hold shift and click on this other piece in the background here and let's right click it and go to duplicate and go to path intersection and then we can turn that green so just so we can see it we can go to path break apart and click off of the graphic to deselect everything and let's click on just this piece down here and press delete on the keyboard we don't need that and then we can click on this one right here we can right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift on the keyboard and click on our original shape right here and go to path difference and then path break apart and what that's going to do if you click off of the graphic it's going to separate this little piece right here so we could take this and get rid of it by pressing delete now i'm going to zoom in over this portion right here i'm going to hold control on the keyboard and roll up on the mouse wheel to, to zoom in and i'm going to grab the bezier pen and i just want to grab this sec this segment of this oval i just want to use this segment right here so i'm going to start the i'm going to start the bezier shape right here Bring the line straight through there, go straight up to here, right up, right through the right through the center of this piece right here, and then connect it back to the starting point. Go to the arrow, hold shift, and click on that oval, and go to path intersection. And we can press one on the keyboard to zoom out to see what happened there. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is uh, let's go back to our Bezier pen actually, and let's bring the cursor between about halfway through this line right here, and then click and hold control and bring it straight through and click again now we can let go of control and we can bring this line straight up through this border over here and right down to the bottom 
and then connect it back to the starting point and go back to the arrow and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on that oval in the background there and go to path difference so we end up with something like this now this doesn't look very uh this looks a little sloppy as we see it now but what we're going to do next is we're going to click and drag over the entire thing and go to path union and now oops i made a mistake there First, what we have to do is take this and convert this into a path before you do the path to union. So let's go to path, stroke to path, and then we can click and drag over this whole thing and unify it together by going to path, union. I made a bit of a mistake there. So once we get here, we could take this and then we can go to path, break apart. And it's going to break that up into all these different little segments that we can color in however we'd like. So I'm going to take, I'm going to click on this piece and then hold shift and click on these other two pieces here in the middle. I'm going to bring the opacity on them all the way up and I'm going to give them a light shade of gray, kind of like that, maybe 10%. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on this piece right here to deselect it. So I now just have these two selected. I'll go to the fill tab and from the HSL tab, I'm going to go to the L column and bring this to the left a little bit just to darken that up, maybe about that much. And then I'll hold shift and click on this big piece right here to deselect that. So we ha just have this piece selected now. And I'll make that one even darker, maybe about that much. And then we can click on the original shape in the background here, this, this big piece back here. We can click on that. We can bring the opacity on that all the way up. And we can give that maybe 90% um, gray or 80%. Whatever you think looks good. I think that's pretty good how it is. And then the next thing I'm going to do is click off of the graphic to deselect it. Let's click on just this segment right here and let's right click that and go to duplicate. And then let's right click it and go to duplicate again. And let's turn that red and bring the opacity on that down. And I'm going to hold control and click and drag this piece down to about here. And then I'm going to hold control and grab this arrow and enlarge that about that much. And then I'll click it again to get the, um, the rotation handles. And I'll take this side handle right here, this side arrow, and I'm just going to tilt that a little bit just so it makes sense it when compared to this line right here maybe about that much I'm actually going to drag this down a little bit maybe about to about there and then hold shift and click on the piece beneath it and go to path intersection and I'm going to give that a little bit of a darker shade maybe that much and I think that looks pretty good now the final step to this thing here is to give the page lines of print to indicate lines of print similar to what I did with my uh, thumbnail here. So how we're going to do that is we're going to go back to our original circles that we originally duplicated and let's click on this first one. Let's turn the fill off. Let's turn the stroke stroke paint tab. Let's turn that on and let's give that maybe a 50 point stroke and see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty good. 50 points and then we can go to path, stroke to path and then we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll, we'll go to the fill, we'll turn that off, go to the stroke paint, turn that on, go to the stroke style and give that a 50 point stroke, path, stroke to path. And then we can go to our uh, create rectangles and squares tool, we can click on that and we can click and drag over the right half of this oval right here. So start out and maybe drawing a line like that. Let's make that green and then hold shift and click on the X button to turn the stroke off of that one. So you end up with something like that right there. And we go back to our arrow and let's right click this and duplicate this and bring this one over here so it's at the same portion right there. And then hold shift on the keyboard and click on that one and go to path difference. And we'll click on this one, hold shift, click on that one and go to path difference. And then I'm gonna hold shift and click on this one right here so we have these both selected. And what we're gonna do next is go to extension, generate from path, and we're going to select interpolate. And you want to have these values set right here for the interpolate menu. Exponent 0, interpolation steps 4, interpolation method 1, and uh, duplicate end paths. And have that checked and the other two unchecked. So that should that's what you want to have that set as. Go ahead and click apply. And it's going to create all of those steps. Well, it should have anyway. I seem to have run into a little bit of a glitch here. Uh, let's see what happened. I'm going to delete that and try that again. I'm going to try maybe making these a little bigger. If the same thing happens to you, click on both of those by holding shift and clicking them. And let's hold control and shift and scale that up a little bit. I'll try that again. Extension, generate from path, interpolate. 
uh, live preview instead to see. Yeah, it's happening again. Hmm. Maybe I could try doing less. Try three. No, that didn't help. Exponent. Okay, so interpolation method two. It's not perfect, but that's good enough. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set that to two and click apply, and that should be that should that should be enough to get the job done. Sometimes when you're using Inkscape, you run into these strange little glitches like this that you don't normally get with other software. But uh, I guess uh, you just gotta learn to deal with it. That did not happen when I was planning this tutorial. But anyway, now that we have this we we have this right here, we can ungroup that by going to the ungroup button, and let's unify it together by going to path. Union, and let's turn it red just so we could differentiate it from that the rest of the graphic, and hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and scale this in, about this much maybe, and let's put this over this gray segment right here. Actually, no, the bigger gray segment right there. We want to put it over it like that, and then we can just scale this in a little bit with these arrows right here, just so that these stripes are going on the inside of that page right there. And I'm going to click on this a second time to get the rotation handles. I'm going to grab this top arrow. I'm going to slide that to the left a little bit just so it's um, it runs parallel with the with the curvature of the page right there. And then I'll click on this this uh, gray piece in the background right here. I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And hold shift in the keyboard and click on that that red graphic we just created and go to path intersection. And then we'll take this gray piece right here right click that duplicate turn that blue bring the opacity down and I'm gonna hold control and bring this down to about here and then I'm gonna hold control again and grab this bottom arrow and scale it up and then click it a second time to get the rotation handles and I'm just gonna take this side handle and slide it down a little bit so that the line is parallel with this one and then hold shift and click on our little red stripes right there and go to path intersection and then we can right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift and, and click on this slightly darker shade of gray beneath it and go to path difference and then hold this click on this this one right here hold shift click on the other gray piece beneath it and go to path difference and then we can click and drag over the whole thing and group it together and we are done you can click on it a second time to get the rotation handles hold control maybe Rotate it around that way. So I don't know maybe give it a little bit of a nicer look But anyway, that's how you can create a rolled up sheet of paper using Inkscape So if you have any questions, let me know and as always thank you for watching